Well, you know, I remember being uh, very excited about uh, a train ride. I'd never been on a train. So to me, it was kind of exciting. I know my, uh, my parents didn't share the same enthusiasm, but it's uh, like you have to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But I remember being excited. I got to be on a train and um, we were riding along. And one of the things that I remember uh, is hearing the older kids singing Don't Fence Me In, which was a song that was popular at the time. I didn't realize how prophetic that would be. But at, uh, I remember those catchy things as I, as I look back on it. But as we got to uh, the campgrounds in Minidoka, I, I saw how flat the land was. It was so flat for miles and miles around. I could see flatness. And then way in the background, you'd see some rolling hills. But other than that, it was so flat. And it was a time of year that was hot, so it was dusty. And I remember the, the dust was so thick and there was no way of stopping the, the wind when they had windstorms. So uh, it would just roll across the landscape and you'd have these tumbleweeds, sagebrushes, just tumbling along with the dust and everything. And you got used to that. So my mother, we used to uh, practice wearing uh, kerchiefs or handkerchiefs, uh, large handkerchiefs around our neck. So if we found ourselves, these uh, windstorms would come up every often, uh, so often without any warning. Then you just pull it up over your kind of like, you know, bandits. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you found that th those were very handy too. And when I had to go to the restroom, which were outhouses, uh, we had to use that as our way of getting to and from during dust storms because we would just be covered, you know, with dust from head to toe. And you can hardly see too. That was kind of a, a thing we got used to. You had to navigate by either having a friend with you or just remember some uh, places along the way as you went. Speaking of Minidoka, um, what happened next? What, you uh, took the train? Train. And a lot of this is a, just a blur. Yes, we were herded onto a train and I remember we had everything tagged and um, I still remember the MPs Line, they were low ranked uh, GIs, but nevertheless, they were there with rifles. And we just did what we were told to do. And now that I see it, I mean, gee, that was so dumb. I mean, you know, I'm sure these, this, in this day and age, I mean, there, there would have been much more violence or people would fight that. But we just went along with it. And oh. I didn't see anybody misbehaving out of line. The barrenness was the you know, Seattle was not built up, and we didn't have a whole lot of skyscraper, but as you approached Minidoka, absolute, no trees, not, and here from the Northwest, we were surrounded by these green forests, and so it was really another, completely another world. We weren't talking about uh, another planet in those days, but I mean, it was definitely dry, flat, especially Minidoka. And now that I've visited the seven of the 10 camps, Minidoka of all places, they had not even a mountain or, or a rock to look at. So again, it, we just had to accept it. And then when you look at the gates, sure there were barbed wires, guard towers. And we sh sure stuck together with the family. <laughs> 
Are there any particularly positive moments that stand out in your mind about the camp experience? Well, I saw the togetherness and the community spirit where people went and had uh, singing sessions. You know, we had community singing and and just um, then later on they did uh, community dances in the mess hall, you know. And so that you felt the bonding and the togetherness. And uh, I thought that was good and people were helping each other and friendly, you know. How about any particularly uh, negative points? Well, the negative aspect was the inconvenience. The, the bathroom situation was very difficult. You know, you, you'd have to go a whole block to go to the bathroom, you know. And then it was all public type of um, facilities and also the laundry room. Big tubs and where you had to go wash your clothes with a scrub board, which I had never seen done till then, you know. And so those were the major inconveniences. But we did make do. I'd go pick up my girlfriend, or she'd come pick me up, and we'd go for walks or whatever, you know. And so, and we'd read books and things, so there wasn't that real boredom, you know. Red gone with the wind, you know. And uh, and the American Friends Service Committee sent in lots of books for us. Some of them, some of the people felt more victimized than some of us, you know, depending on the situation. There was a lot of turmoil when the boys volunteered for the service because some of the parents felt like, why are you going to the service when we're thrown into camp, you know. And some of the older Issei's actually felt that Japan was going to win the war. And they said, hey, you know, why are you doing this? You know? 